Great. Hello, everybody. Th thanks for coming. Don't chew too loud. Um, uh, I really appreciate being invited to Busboys and Poets. I've heard a lot about it over the years. And uh, it's great to be here. Um, and I've been um, going around the country talking about my book. And uh, uh, I was surprised about a week and a half ago when um, this guy named Barack Obama stole my, uh, my theme. Um, you probably remember in the inaugural speech uh, a week and a half ago, he talked about uh, the lessons we need to learn, the important milestones from Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall, um, the milestones of the women's rights movement and the civil rights movement and the gay rights movement. Um, and that was a great, uh, a great speech for reminding us how important it is that we stand on the shoulders of these great people who came before us and who have turned radical ideas into common sense ideas and expanded our democracy and, our, uh, and our, made our society more democratic. But one of the things that I noticed in the speech, and you probably noticed it yourself, um, is that there was something missing in that litany of great, uh, great moments, great milestones of progressive history, Seneca Falls, Selma, and Stonewall. Um, and there was really nothing about the labor movement in that list. Um, and I, um, I thought to myself, like, why, why not, right? Uh, why was the labor movement missing? And then I thought, well, maybe it's because there was no great milestone of the labor movement that began with the letter S, right? So I was trying to think, if I was his speechwriter, right, <laughs> and I was trying to inject the labor movement into, uh, into the Obama inaugural speech, what would I, what would I have advised them? And you know, I was thinking about what are some of the great uh, moments of, of labor history, some of which I talk about in my book. Well, one of the great turning points was Flint, the Flint sit-down strike of 1937. But Flint starts with F, so you can't do that. But sit-down starts with S, right? And there was the great sit-down strike in, uh, in Seattle uh, in 1919. There was a great uh, general strike in San Francisco in 1934. San Francisco starts with S. Um, and one of the great moments of uh, labor history in the United States in the most recent period was the great Salinas uh, great boycott uh, with Cesar Chavez and the farm workers, and Salinas starts with S. So um, uh, I wish I'd had a chance to talk to Obama's speechwriter and inject at least one S into, the, uh, into that speech for the labor movement. But other than that, uh, I thought the speech did a great job of reminding us how important it is to know our history and to know how far we've come and to know, uh, to learn some lessons from that history. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about those lessons. Uh, I'm gonna give some examples from my book about some of the people I wrote about. Um, and then because I am a college professor and because some of my former students are here, I'm gonna give you a quiz <clears throat> at the end uh, of, of tonight's presentation. So if you think about a uh, hundred years ago, uh, and you think about if I were standing here, if busboys and poets had existed a hundred years ago, or the beginning of the, the 1900s, and I had said that, you know, what we need in this country is old age insurance so that old people don't have to uh, die in poverty, that they can, re they can retire at some reasonable age and not live in destitution. Or if I'd said that what we need is uh, the women should have the right to vote, or that uh, workers should have the right to unionize, or we should have a progressive income tax, or maybe the government should take some responsibility for, for protecting consumers against dangerous medical products and medicine and unhealthy food and unsafe and uh, unhealthy workplaces. Uh, if I'd said that maybe we should have a law uh, protecting, um, protecting uh, people from being harassed uh, when they, uh, if they are gay or lesbian. Uh, if I said that we should have some kind of national health insurance system. Um, if I said that what we need in this country is an end to lynching and the right for African Americans to have the right to vote. All of those things and many more, you would think I was a utopian you would think I was maybe somewhat crazy. 
uh, I was uh, unrealistic, uh, I was impractical, or I, maybe I was even a Bolshevik or a communist or a socialist. And everything I just said is now taken for granted, things that our society accepts as normal. So one of the themes of my book uh, is that the radical ideas of one generation are often the common sense of the next or subsequent generations. And the book is really about the 100 Americans who made that happen, the people who helped to build the labor movement, helped to build the women's suffrage and the women's rights movement, helped to build the civil rights movement, the environmental movement, the gay and lesbian rights movement, the peace movement, uh, and to uh, advance our society towards more justice and more equality. And I think there's a, a quality that progressives have which is both a good quality and a, and a bad quality, which is progressives are never satisfied. We never uh, accept uh, the status quo. Sometimes that can make for uh, kind of an irritable situation because uh, we never think that things are good enough. But if you look back 100 years and you realize how far we've come and the struggles that were necessary to bring about a better society, that actually gives me hope about the about the future, and in the last chapter of the book, it's called the 21st century so far, I, I itemize some of the Im incredible, impressive changes just in the last 12 years, 12 or 13 years, that have moved our society continuing in the direction of, of more uh, social justice and more democracy. As you all know, uh, Martin Luther King had this great phrase that the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. But what he didn't say is that somebody has to bend it. Somebody has to take responsibility for moving that arc towards justice. And the people that I wrote about in my book are the people that were the benders of society. Um, so let me tell you about a few of them and then draw some lessons from that and then give you your quiz. Um, I was in Milwaukee about uh, three or four months ago giving a talk at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. Um, and one of the great heroes in my book is a guy named Victor Berger. Victor Berger was the first socialist congressman. He was elected from Milwaukee in 1911. And while he was in Milwaukee, he organized the labor movement and the socialist party to take over the city government. And they instituted some incredible changes which other cities replicated all over the country. Uh, they built incredible parks. They kept the waterfront from being overdeveloped uh, by wealthy people so that working class people could have access to the waterfront. They developed a great public education system, a great public health system, and they developed an incredible sewer system which improved the quality of public health in Milwaukee. They were so proud of their sewer system that they started calling themselves sewer socialists because they were, you know, they, and it was very well run, very efficient, a municipally owned sewer system. And so Victor Berger spent uh, a lot of time he was an Austrian immigrant and he, uh, he built up the progressive and socialist movement in Milwaukee and then in 1911 he was elected to Congress and when he was elected to Congress he came here to Washington um, and he uh, introduced a lot of very progressive legislation most of which didn't go anywhere at first but some of those ideas later became including women's suffrage uh, later became uh, law. One of the ideas he had in 1911 was something called old age insurance, which today we call Social Security. Back then, that was considered a radical idea. It was so radical that he couldn't get any votes for it in, in the House of Representatives. Uh, in the 1930s, obviously, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, the New Deal, the Progressive Congress, and the grassroots labor movement and protest movements of the time pushed the system uh, to be more progressive and they passed Social Security, but even at the time, the business community, conservatives, said this was a socialist, a radical idea, it was gonna ruin the economy, um, and so it was still considered uh, a radical idea, but it was nevertheless uh, now law. Um, about a year ago, uh, a poll was done of Tea Party members, and they asked them a lot of questions about their views about many things, uh, and one of them was how they felt about Social Security. And about 70% of all the Tea Party members that they polled said that, uh, that uh, Congress and the business community should not mess with Social Security. They thought that Social Security was sacrosanct, right? So how did this idea of 
Social Security go from being the socialist radical idea 100 years ago